Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. So we're going to get into the Word. Who's ready for the Word? Yeah. Having an attitude of a winner. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Don't you realize in the New Living Translation that in a race, everybody runs. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, everybody. everybody. Or like American slang, everybody. <laughs> okay. Everybody runs. We're all in the race. He says, but one person gets the prize. So it's not just about being in the race, but it's got to do with how you run. And then he says, so run to win. Shout it out at me, run to win. Run to win. So your goal is not to not pass out. Are you hearing me? Your goal is to win. You were born a winner. Are you hearing me? Amongst the millions and millions and millions of swimmers. Some of you not getting me. You came first. Are you hearing me? So scientifically spoken, you are one in a million. It's not a lie. Say with me, I am one in a million. Bump your neighbor and say, I beat millions to be here today. Are you hearing me? Well, I wanted a boy. What, Dad? I beat all them loser boys. So did you want one of them losers? Are you hearing me? No, you won. God predestined you. And then he says, while still in your mother's womb, I formed you and I knew you, which means God has got an assignment for your life. So you were born a winner. Now get into this race and run like a winner with an attitude of a champion. So therefore, we see how he explains it. He says, run in such a way that you may obtain it. Run to win. And then he says, how do we run? He says, therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, not, to, not faithless, not I'm not sure, I don't know, not with uncertainty, but knowing that you will win. When, in, when champions are interviewed, even if they win, they always think they can do better. Are you hearing me? That's a sign of a winner. It's not, well, I must just do what I need to do just to get by. It's just my job. No winner thinks like that. No winner thinks like that. Anything a winner does is with the attitude of a winner. Are you hearing me? So it's not with uncertainty. But we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I can do this. You can do it. So it's not, well, I'm not good enough. I, I don't have what it takes. But rather, it's a raw faith in the potential that God has placed with you on the inside. Now, it's, so it's not putting yourself down, but it's a raw faith in the potential. Never do your words use the words. It's impossible. Never do you allow your excuses to define your life. You're not a person of excuses. Come on, somebody. But you are there to beat the excuses. That's why you're here. So when people come with excuses, you say, ah, hang on, that's why I'm here. Well, it can't be done. Why? One, two, three, four, five. Ha! Ah, that's why I'm here. Bump your neighbor. Say, that's why I'm here. Are you hearing me? That's why the Bible says, Luke 1.37, with God, all things are 
possible. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Therefore, I run. How do I run? So I run with purpose in every step. Thus I fight, not as one that beats in the air. I'm not just using all my energy for nothing. No, I'm accurate concerning what I need to do concerning the things. And therefore, what do I do? He says, I discipline my body. And that's why I want to take this part of the word. And I want to go into today's message. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should, not what it wants to. Training it to do what it should. Training to do what it should. Training it to do what it should, not what it wants to. So therefore, athlete disciplines their body. And therefore, even when an athlete, they train, they train why? Because they want to win. So an athlete, what do they do? They, 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 everything they do, even with their, their, their diet, they eat. They eat, they eat to run. They don't eat to eat. They don't breathe air to breathe air. See, there's purpose. You don't get up in the morning just to get up. You get up with purpose. Are you hearing me here today? So an athlete disciplines their body. Therefore, they, they don't eat to eat. They eat to run, but they run to win, which means they eat to win. What you give your attention to spiritually, you eat to win. What you hear, you hear to win. What you watch, you watch to win. What are you listening to on the way to work? Are you hearing me? So therefore, he says, I discipline my body. And I'm skipping a whole bunch of stuff because I don't have a lot of time this morning. So what do we need? We need spiritual discipline. And that's why we are in a time of prayer and fasting. As a church, that's why we're doing it for 21 days. So that we can form a lifestyle. So it be a lifestyle. We're not, we're not fasting because it's a spiritual thing to do. We don't pray because it's a spiritual thing to do. We get into that place where we want it to be lifestyle. We fast and we pray because we need God within our life to fulfill His original purpose for our lives. So therefore, if we look at Acts chapter 2 and 42, it says they continued steadfastly. Say with me, continued steadfastly. Say with me, continued steadfastly, which means they continued steadfastly. So, Every day, they continued steadfastly. There was discipline within their lives as to what they needed to do. In what did they continue steadfastly on a daily basis? Number one, the apostles' doctrine. Secondly, fellowship. Thirdly, the breaking of bread. And fourthly, in prayer. Are you with me? So first of all, the apostles' doctrine. What is the apostles' doctrine? It is where the word, you receive the word from the apostle. Apostle means sent one. The sent one into your life. The one, your, your senior pastor, your, 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 uh, uh, your immediate pastor, your leader, those that are, are sent into your lives to speak the word because, well, it's me and Jesus. I can read the Bible for yourself. That's not biblical because you interpret the Bible from the level where you're at. Are you hearing me? So from the level, it means you'll never grow. You'll never develop. You'll never, you'll never, because you are at your level, you're interpreting and you'll see the Bible from your need. So there's a few, there's a, a when we talk about apostles doctrine, see, and the interpretation of the word of God within our lives. We've got to understand that when the word is spoken, we need that interpretation within our life. And now as the apostle speaks it into your life, now what happens? You interpret it like a coach. You understand? That's why athletes have, athletes have coaches. Are you hearing me here today? Okay. So, the apostle's doctrine. Secondly, fellowship. You become who you hang around with. Can I get a big amen there? 
So that's why in, 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 in the church we have our services taking place. That's why, first of all, Apostles Doctrine, don't miss a Sunday service. Don't miss the church. Don't miss, don't, don't, don't miss service. Where, where you don't get what you want, you get what you need. Not what you think you need. Your children will say, well, I, I want ice cream for breakfast, for lunch. Come on, somebody. I want, the, I want prosperity. Uh, you know, you, you want your, no, it's not what you want. It's what God knows you need. Are you hearing me? So Apostles Doctrine, that's why I don't miss the service on a Sunday. Don't miss the word for that week. Don't miss your meal. Don't, don't make sure you're getting what God wants you to get. Then secondly, fellowship. Hang around people where you are challenged in who you are. Hang around people that make you feel uncomfortable. Are you hearing me? Oh, oh I, 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 I hang around some people. You, you might be if, if my best friend for life, you know, thank you. You accept me just the way I am. You don't want friends like that. You don't want friends that are, while you're in the hole, get in the hole with you. And then both of you are digging the hole deeper, you know. And you're feeling sorry for yourself and then they're feeling sorry for you and then they feel sorry for themselves and then they feel sorry for themselves. Then they're depressed, you're depressed, everybody's depressed and then they blame somebody, they blame that somebody with them. You blame, you blame who they blame together. You understand? So, so then you, you, you like, you're like two or three buddies and the three of you blame everything for your, your marriage problems and your family problems and the country's problems. And that's, uh, it's so-and-so and it's Bob and it's my leader and it's my pastor and it's everything and whatever. And then what happens? They agree to blame the people you blame. If you agree to blame the people they... It's a whole conspiracy... Don't be stupid. Don't hang around people that leave you the way you are. Hang around people that hound you. Hang around people that challenge you. Hang around people that say, why aren't you at church? Hang around people say, why don't you attend cell? Are you doing devotion? What are you doing with your life? Don't hang around backslidden people. And if you feel uncomfortable, rather feel uncomfortable and hang around right pe wrong people. Rather feel guilty Bump your neighbor, say, don't be stupid. Okay. You become who you hang. You show me your friends, I will show you where you're going. Now, and I'm serious. Show me who you socialize with. Show me who you socialize with. And I'll tell you quickly where you're going, and I'll tell you where your kids are going. I'll tell you where your kids are going. Second fellowship. Thirdly, breaking of bread. Breaking of bread is the communion table where we sit around communion. That's why we have communion once a month. There's different places we have communion. And communion is the table. It's, the, it's got to do with the cross. It's got to do with the blood. The foundation of Christianity is the resurrection, the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The power of the blood of Jesus. Set me by the blood of Jesus. I am redeemed from the power of the enemy. So that by the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven of all my sin. By the blood of Jesus, I am cleansed now and continually from all my sin. By the blood of Jesus, I am justified and God sees me just as if I'd never sinned. By the blood of Jesus, I am sanctified, set apart for God's purpose. Isn't that incredible? Hallelujah. So once again, we get together, we partake communion, and then one of the, the, the next one is a, a prayer. And fasting is part of prayer. And that's why we need to pray and we need to fast. And that's why we're doing within your personal life. You need to have a devotional life of prayer to the Lord. Prayer is communicating with God. But you've got to learn how to pray. Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. It says before daybreak in the New Living Translation, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went to an isolated place to pray. So when did Jesus pray? Early in the morning. When did Jesus pray? Early in the morning. So that's why the Lord's Prayer is a daily prayer. He says, give us this day our 
it's, it's not a weekly prayer. It's not a monthly prayer. You don't buy your groceries and then pray over them. No, you pray every meal. Can I get a big amen there? Hallelujah. We continually, we pray. We're thankful. Every meal we have, we pray. We just say, thank you. You understand? So once again, once again, when we pray, Jesus, early in the morning, Jesus got up. For you that are on Zoom, lying in your bed with your phone. For you in the morning, joining us at five o'clock on Zoom with your video off. And your phone is here next to your cushion. Nah. What did Jesus do? He got up. What did Jesus do? He got up. What did Jesus do? What are we going to do this next week? And there he went to a solitary place to play. In other words, a place where people can't bug you, where people can't take away your attention, a place where you can concentrate, a place where you can get away from people that are texting you and WhatsApping you and all kinds of things. Can I get a big amen there? So to a solitary place, an isolated place, and there he prayed. Now look at the next part. He says, when they found him, they said, hey, everyone is looking for you. Say, but Jesus. But Jesus replied. Now let me show you what happens after you've prayed. This is what happens after you prayed. Jesus says, we must go. (laughs) What did Jesus say? We must go. So he says, we must go to the other towns as well, and I will preach. Say with me, I will preach. I will preach them uh, uh, to them too. Listen to this. That is why I came. That is why. So I don't do it to do it. It's understanding why. So when you pray, what are you doing? You are recalibrating the purpose of God in your life for what you need to do for that day. Are you hearing me here? So what do you need to do for that day? So Jesus says, now, 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 now watch this. He says, look at this. Everyone is looking for you. Now, did Jesus respond to that statement? No. Everyone is looking for you. You go, oh, is that so? Oh, now if you need, if you need TLC, you're going to say, oh, everyone, oh, I feel so important. Okay. Or you lose focus. Everyone, oh, okay, everyone, who, what, what do they want? What must I do? Okay, tell me, tell me everything. No, 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 no. You see, when you are in prayer, you're not a reactor. You don't react to the whims of what everybody says. Everybody's looking for you. You must, you must, you must, you must, you must. No, no, no. You see, when you have purpose established in your life, the masses don't determine your, your going. I don't do because everybody else says I must do. I don't go because everybody else says I must go. I go because God has ordained me. I have purpose. Come on, somebody. So, so, so he says everybody. He doesn't even answer to everybody. He, they say everybody is looking for you. What does he say? I must go to another town. He doesn't even respond. Why? Because he's prayed. He's got purpose. He's got direction. He's got focus. He's got vision. He knows why he's alive. And that's why we pray, people. You know why you're overwhelmed? You know why you're stressed out? Everyone. (laughs) Because of everyone, people that you have in your life, people that shouldn't be in your life, 
No, no, no. I respond to the purpose of God. Lord, this is what you've planned. This is what you've deigned for me for this day. Can I get a big amen there? That's why I came. You see, and that's why we pray. That's why we fast. Why do we fast? Because we need God. Fasting is to draw us closer to God. It helps us to break away from the desires that satisfy our own lusts and materialism. Say with me, food. You're not the boss of me. Yo, Satan. Amen. Say with me, stuff. You're not the boss of me. You're not going to make me feel bad or good. I decide. When you have money, you're happy. When you don't have money, you're sad. What rubbish is that? <laughs> Hallelujah. We know God's in control of our lives. Amen. Amen. So therefore, fasting brings you to the place where you, where you realize that your dependence is on God. And therefore, when we fast, we fast and pray for purpose. That means for purpose. That's why in Acts 14, 23, it says, So when they had an appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting. So that means prayed with fasting. You see, prayer and fasting go hand in hand. Matthew 6 verse 16 says, Moreover, when you fast, Jesus is saying, not if you fast, when you fast, we get to that place where we trust the Lord. Why? We fast and pray. They're appointed elders. And that's why we're fasting and praying at this time. That's why in the next two weeks, we're going to be fasting and praying. Join us five o'clock in the prayer meetings. And then uh, next Sunday, the following Sunday, on the 20-something, we're going to, uh, what they said, 20, 29th, we're going to have an anointing service, and we're going to anoint you and your family. We're going to set you apart for God's purpose, for your assignment. Say with me, I have an assignment. I have an assignment. Bump your neighbor and say, I'm not just here. <laughs> say to your neighbor, I have an assignment. Have an assignment. Amen. Amen. We're going to anoint you for your assignment. Hallelujah. Your assignment is not just to survive. <laughs> You've got purpose in your life. God wants you to be an influencer. wants you to be a world changer. He wants you to be a history maker. Can I get a big amen there? So God's got an assignment for your life. That's why in two weeks time on the anointing Sunday, we're going to, but you see, we can only pray over you after a time of prayer with fasting. Are, are you getting me here today? So if you haven't yet started fasting, you haven't yet joined us, I would encourage you, start doing that. There's some that are doing a full fast, it's just with water, God bless you. There's some that are doing just a liquid fast, which is what I'm doing at the moment. There's some that are, 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 are doing a Daniel's fast, just fruit and vegetable, no luxury foods, no, no, just, just fruit and vegetable. There's, there's people that are doing one meal, their one main meal a day, or two meals a day, whatever it is. So, so you, 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 you know where you're at. You know what you do. You know the energy you need to do for your job or whatever it is. But take a time and don't, don't for one, get a fast one day. No, no, don't do the one day thing. We, we take the next 14 days. So every day so that you can get into a habit. And then when you fast that meal, you know, don't have social time. Take that time. Go pray. Get into the Word. Can I get a big amen? amen. Lunch time. Take 10 minutes. Take 10 minutes quickly. Go and get the word and say, Lord, this is why I'm fasting. I need you in my life. I want to be accurate concerning my assignment. Can I get a big amen there? So if it's one meal, if it's two meals, you take those meals. Hallelujah. And then you save money on food as well. By the way, that's an added blessing. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's why it helps us. Say, so I discipline my body. Say, so me, I discipline my body. Say, so me, I discipline my body and teach it to what it should do, not what it wants to do. Amen. Is this helping you? Yes. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Just stay where you are. Hallelujah. Raise your hands unto the Lord. Say to me, Lord, for 2023, I commit myself 
to your assignment on my life, on my children's life. Thank you, Lord. I am called. I am a champion. I am a winner. And thank you, Lord. You help me to run to win, to run like a champion. Help me, Lord, to discipline my body, to bring it into subjection for your assignment on my life, your assignment on my family in this time. Help me, Lord, to be effective in this time of fasting and prayer in Jesus' name. Thank you. You can put your hands down while every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Closed. Before we close today, maybe there's somebody here you've not yet given your life to Jesus. I want to pray with you. God wants to do something special within your life because He loves you and He cares for you. He wants to bring about change and transformation in your life. Coming to church does not make you Christian. Calling yourself Christian doesn't make you Christian. Fasting doesn't make you Christian. Prayer doesn't make you Christian. The Bible says unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, born of your parents gives you the right as a human to walk the earth. But to be a child of God, you've got to be born of God. Born of God means God comes and places the seed of His Spirit within side of you, which changes and transforms your nature, yourself. You can discipline your Self to a certain degree, but you cannot change your nature. You cannot change your heart. Only God can change you. But for that to happen, you've got to acknowledge you're a sinner. I need God. Lord, I can't do this without you. I need you. And invite him into your life. God will come in. He'll forgive you and he'll cleanse you and you'll never be the same again. Listen to what I'm saying. And if that's you here today, you want to give your life to Jesus, I'm going to count to three and I want you to raise your hand. If you've never given your life to Jesus or you've given your life to Jesus, but you're backslidden and you want to come back to the Lord today, I want to include you in this prayer as well. So if you want to raise your hand, quickly do it now. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for those hands. Thank you, thank you. You can put your hands down. I just want to ask one more time. The Bible says now is the time of salvation. God is speaking to you now. You're not guaranteed that you'll be in the spiritual atmosphere where God will speak to you. You might leave this place and never ever sense that urgency in your heart, that uneasiness in your spirit. <laughs> that uneasiness, God is speaking to you now. That uneasiness, that's the Holy Spirit challenging you here. None of us will even be guaranteed that we're alive tomorrow. If you had to stand before God today, is your life right with God? And if I want to ask one more time, if you never raised your hand and you want to do it, quickly slip it up now. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I see those hands. Now I wonder if you can do one more thing for me. I want to pray with you. And if you raise your hand, I wonder if you can take your belongings, just quickly stand up out of your seats, quickly come forward here so I can pray with you. Quickly come forward, come on. Yes. Hallelujah, come on. Bow your heads in prayer, every head bowed, every eye closed. Become aware of the presence of God. He loves you so, so very much. 
I want you to say these words to him. Say to me, dear Jesus, I need you in my life. Please forgive my sin. Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. Everything that I am, I surrender unto you. Everything that I am, I give to you. Thank you, Lord, that you change me. And as from now, according to your word, I can say, I am a child of God. And Lord, I pray over each and every person here this morning that has given their lives to you. Every power of the devil broken over their lives right now. Every curse removed. You have purpose for their lives. You have an assignment for their lives, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for every power of the devil that wants to take them into the wrong route. It's broken over their lives today in Jesus' name as we set you apart for divine purpose. Thank you, Lord. You take control of their lives. And as from now, they belong to you in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at P.O. Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.